How's it guys and welcome to another episode of the PH Journals. In today's episode, I'm going to be discussing and doing a little bit of a review on the, probably one of the most important aspects in any professional hunter's bag or for guys coming over and doing a safari in South Africa, what you'll need to bring along as far as optics is concerned. Now, as a PH, you would know optics are probably, if not the most important tool you can have in your gear bag. I've had a lot of requests over social media over the past couple of weeks about doing some reviews about products that I use out in the bush. And this, I thought, would be a great way to start it off would be to use, obviously, the most important thing in your gear bag, the optics. Um, so, yeah, before we get into the whole episode, just got to give a big thank you to the following sponsors. That's Treason, um, Tacticam, Maxis Tires, a big one. They're a fantastic uh, taxidermy in South Africa, Splitting Image Taxidermy. If you guys haven't yet, head along to splittingimage.co.za. They have, they've done some incredible work, and it's not just about um, putting a mount up on the wall. The attention to detail, the communication is unbelievable. Uh, I'm so chuffed to be on board with these guys, and um, yeah, they've got a wonderful future ahead. And then last but not least, PH Toolbox. If you're a young and up-and-coming PH, and you want to earn a little bit of extra money, especially when you're not hunting, um, head along to uh, phtoolbox.ca.za um, and have a look at the PH program. If you're unsure as well, hit me up on any one of my social media platforms. I'll be a, more than willing to answer any questions you guys might have. It's an affiliate program where you can earn a bit of commission and test out some really cool products, all free of charge. So depending which tier you qualify on, um, it is just a really great way to fill the gaps when you're not in the hunting season. So, um, yeah, and then, guys, again, a big shout-out to Designer Health Products, um, the official drink of the PH Journals podcast. Today, I am testing out the CBD beans um, from Healthy Guy Coffee, or Healthy Coffee Guy. Um, fantastic blend. I mean, it's, it's great. The taste is out of this world. And uh, yeah, it's Sunday, so we're relaxing. And you know, besides, again, all the health benefits, it tastes great. It really is just an awesome blend of coffee, and I'm so stoked to be affiliated with these guys. Um, they do some awesome products across the range. Uh, I will tag their link, uh, their social media link below. Hey guys, cool. So before we get into it, there is something I would like to address, and uh, that is the terrible slaughter of our farmers um, in the year in South Africa. And if I am able to use my platform as a platform going forward to make the rest of the world aware of what's actually happening here, um, I'm going to do so. And I read a stat um, on one of the social media feeds that one, 1 1.3 farmers on average per day are getting killed. It's, it's a terrible, um, yeah, and it's all racially motivated from our polit politicians, the people that are meant to be looking after our best interests and um, actually paving a way forward for a better South Africa. and they destroying it at the moment. They really are. Um, it's terrible to see some of the brutal, brutal things that are happening to our farmers. And my thoughts and prayers from PH Journals and PH Toolbox go out to all the farmers out there that have lost loved ones. Um, stay safe, guys. And uh, we we 100% behind you. And um, we from our side we'll try and do our best whatever we can to get the message across and make people aware of what's actually happening out here in South Africa so yeah um, guys and like I mentioned a little bit earlier um, 
I've had some incredible feedback as far as the social media platforms have been uh, with regards to a lot of questions and stuff. So there was a there was a, a topic that was brought up a couple of episodes ago on one of my uh, um, podcasts, and that was based around harvest. Why I don't like to use the word harvest? I tell you why, and it's a simple it's a simple reason. Harvest for me. If I'm explaining a hunting scenario, is not somebody coming out to the lodge, jumping on a bucky or pickup, going out into the fault, shooting an animal, putting it on the back of the pickup, bringing it home, uh, slaughtering it, cutting it up, putting it in the deep freeze. To me, that's harvesting. It, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not that I disagree with it. Um, it is a form of conservation. But for me, if you want to get a message across to an anti-hunter, to a non-hunter, to a, um, a greenie, to a tree hugger, whatever you want to call them, the best way of doing it is by describing a hunting scenario. Going out there, using your skills, your land understanding, understanding the animal, why their footpaths, why do they travel these footpaths all the time, their feeding um, habits. What do they feed? Using your skills to har sorry, harvest, to shoot an animal, to hunt an animal that you desire is hunting. Harvesting for me is, like I said, just jump in a pickup, go out there, shoot your animal, come back. Everything's dandy. I mean, I even saw, I saw to this, this morning actually going through my phone, there's a cushion that you can lie on top of your roof now with different compartments, different levels where you can lie down and actually shoot from. Uh, so to me, that's, is it a form of hunting? Some would argue with me about it. I, I don't think it is. I personally don't. Um, but it's definitely a way of harvesting and conservation. There, there's definitely a space for it here in South Africa. And that's where the Biltong episode came in. But as a whole, as a whole industry, we need to we need to have these conversations, and you know we need to open up these these speech bubbles, because what's happening is is none of us really want to focus on the harder questions, you know. So I've seen it a lot of times, and with a lot of friends of mine, with a lot of young PHs coming up. The conversation gets brought to, oh, why would you shoot a giraffe? Why would you shoot a zebra? And the immediate response will be, it's feeding villages, it's for conservation, um, it's too many of them, it's difficult to transport. Uh, all these sort of things just blown up and they get immediately on the defensive side. Instead of actually opening up a concentrated discussion about why we do what we do. And I think it's important for us to do these things. And because, you know, the wildlife don't have a say. Yet they're relying on two groups, the tree huggers and the hunters, sorry, to protect what's left of them. Yet we can't agree. So they sort of rely on two parties. They can't have a open and honest conversation with one another. So I encourage hunters to when you have these opportunities that come along, like the harvest conversation, but that's just between two hunters and people that agree of it, when you have these discussions come along, don't be scared to open up a conversation. If they get on the defensive side, well, then they really don't want to understand your point. And if you're not willing to understand their point, well, then it's never going to work. But if we open up these conversations and we're willing to listen and understand from one another, it's a different ball game completely. Some of my very own wife was a vegetarian. But because we had this conversation, well, we were pretty much forced to because <laughs> we loved each other and wanted to get married. But because we had an open and honest conversation about the industry that I am passionate about for conservation, and what she's seen from her side, we managed to come to an agreement, and my wife actually eats venison now. 
look, she'll eat a lot of meat. That's um, ethically farmed and done correctly. But it's because we were we were able to have a hard conversation with one another and make one another understand our different points. There were some of her points that she brought up that I really respected. And I'm fortunate now because I'm that much wiser. So yeah, guys, um, don't be scared to have those conversations. Next up, we'll be chatting about optics. <clears throat> I was very fortunate in the past couple of years, I uh, saved up enough money through tips and stuff, and um, I managed to give myself, I had a budget range, uh, entry level set of binoculars, and then heading over to the States, um, I had saved up enough money to buy myself the first generation Leicas, uh, the ones with the range finder in, I mean, the standing 10 by 42s, and they were outstanding. Uh, probably one of the best set of binos at that time I used. Um, I was very fortunate to try a whole bunch of different ones out, from Swarovski to Zas to Leopold, across the board. But the Lakers for me just, they were a bit bulky, but it, it worked in their favor definitely because uh, they were a little bit more robust out in the field. They could take a punch. Um, I just really enjoyed the binoculars. Unfortunately, uh, two seasons ago, um, my pickup was broken into and unfortunately it was stolen. But I received these Vortex <clears throat> Kabab um, 15 by 56s uh, from a very good friend of mine who's been out hunting numerous times with me, uh, Patrick Dugan, um, and I appreciate them so much. Uh, Again, they come with a nice silicone, robust case. Um, they can really take a punch. The thing I like about Vortex, and I've done a little bit of research into this whole thing, is the um, lifetime warranty plays a huge role as far as the South African pH is concerned because um, you want that surety when you're out in the bush that if something does go wrong, Vortex will happily replace or fix whatever the issue may be, or if they're completely written off, they'll actually replace them. Um, <clears throat> so that's a fantastic thing to have on your side, um, especially when you're out, out in the felt. And um, yeah, I've just I've recently, in the, in the last show, where I went over to SCR, um, I had a much closer look at the uh, Vortex Furies, uh, the HD with the range found in. Um, what a set of binos. Those were fantastic. Unfortunately, a little bit out of my price range at the time, but incredible set of binoculars. But there's a whole bunch of guys that are coming in and, and definitely um, adding a lot of value as far as the optic side's concerned. And um, I was very fortunate. I tried out the new Sig and Sauer. That's pretty cool um, with the Bluetooth connection to your scope. So once you range on the animal, it automatically dials in on your scope um, to where the crosshairs need to be, which is very cool. <clears throat> and you're sort of lifting your game up when you when you go for a setup like that. Also very pricey, um, just the binoculars itself, sort of in the same price range as the Vortex. Um, and they're very similar glass. I really enjoyed the Vortex ranging. It was a lot better, a lot more crisp and clear. Um, yeah, fantastic set of binos. And hopefully in the near future, I can save up a bit of bucks to, to put aside and give myself some. Um, another set of binoculars I wasn't so impressed with. Um, again, guys, these reviews, I'm not endorsed by any of these companies. It's just my personal opinion on what I feel and what I've tried and tested um, at these shows, uh, out in the field, and I'm just um, giving my personal experience on what I've had. So the other set I tried were the Swarovski, the rangefinders with the Swarovski, the new, the latest ones that just come out. I actually just didn't have a name for them right now, but my, my, my issue with them, the glass was great, but the ranging was terrible. It was horrendous. It was so big, um, it covered most of the, the eyepiece. Um, and it, it, 
it sort of had a it, it 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 had a pretty cool thing where it had animal tracking. So the further the animal got away from us, the, it would track it constantly. But what concerned me was was just the size of the actual range, the numbers inside the eyepiece. It was ridiculously big. They didn't really need to be that big. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what the reasoning is behind that from Swarovski. They might have had their calculations in, um, but from 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 my personal opinion that really put me off and you know for the price tag that they are um i think you are playing well over the three thousand dollar mark for them was just really um obscure to actually um you know the quality of lens doesn't justify the price because there's so many great optics that are coming out there that are getting closer and closer to the leading optic ranges i mean Behind me, I've got my Maven spotting scope, which for me has been the best spotting scope I could actually have. Um, but we'll get into that in another episode. At the moment, we just want to focus more on the binoculars. So as a professional hunter, you're looking for something that's going to have you all your bases covered. Um, it's got to have a good glass. Um, and, you know, for me, the ultimate... Uh, binoculars at this stage what would conveniently help me out in the bush would probably be the vortex um, they've got a fantastic set of glass the ranging is outstanding i really enjoyed the furies ranging it was crisp neat uh, it was clean they come compact um, with a nice uh, silicone durable case um, and you actually get a little chest pouch with them which to me was pretty cool we don't often get them here in South Africa, the chest pouches. So when I go over, I'll try and bring back a couple um, just to try and test them out because, um, you know, you want to you have that perfect fit. You want to have, you want to be as comfortable as possible when you're out in the bush because, you know, if you're feeling good out there, you know, you're going you're gonna to start delivering um, some top quality PHN skills and stuff. So, yeah, for me... My number one will probably be the Vortex Furies, very close in second. Um, unfortunately, they don't have ranging, um, but the Maven 10 by 42s were outstanding. The glass was unbelievable. I think, I stand corrected on this, I think, but when I was there, I did chat to a guy by the name of Chris. Uh, he did say that the Mavens also came out with a, a lifetime warranty. Um, they had some pretty cool features. You could custom design your 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 um, case, um, whether you wanted aluminium rings or you wanted a bit of engraving in there to the actual pattern of the whole binocular. So that was pretty cool for me, um, <clears throat> especially when, as a professional hunter, you're developing your personal brand. To have that on your binoculars is is such a cool thing. So. Yeah, for me, a very close second would have been the Maven. Look, if they had a rangefinder set coming out, I would have jumped on them without a hesitation. I uh, would have tried to <laughs> apply for a higher credit card um, uh, funding. But yes, it was, they were... I mean, the glass in, in Maven is just unbelievable. Um, and then, uh, yeah, guys, on my top five of optics, third would be um, Zas. I was very impressed with the Zas ranging as well. Uh, the rangefinder binoculars there. It also came out pretty crisp and clear. The only concern is I didn't find them very accurate. Uh, you sort of, you know, with the vortex, um, you could pick up on a tree and get an accurate ranging on that. On the, on the Zas, it was a little bit, you needed a more solid um, uh, point where you could range on and uh, it put me off a little bit um but yeah they i use zas in all my rifles as far as scopes are concerned and they're fantastic they really are i, I thoroughly enjoy them uh, they're easy to clean they're easy to work with they're easy to understand and they've de de delivered in the binoculars zas for me has always had they've always attracted a different aspect into optics for me I see them more as a as a safari optic, um, so 
taking them with you to the great migration or when you go birding um i just feel that the more time you're spending with the zeiss the better the optic gets and they're not real workhorse optic i could be wrong it's just again my personal experience with them um it would definitely be a, a binocular that I would pack in my luggage when I'm going birding or um, going to see the grave migration, whatever that may be. So, uh, yeah, although the quality is out of this world, and that's why they get a number three on my list. Then number four and number five. Number four will be the Leopold. I haven't had too much opportunities to try it with Leopold, but although I can see the company doing some pretty great things in the future, um, they just deliver an, an all-round good workhorse binoculars. Um, unfortunately, again, none of them have range finders in, which to me is a really important aspect. I don't like the fact that you've got to carry a range finder, pick it up range, and then look through your binoculars. To me, having an all-in-one is probably the ideal um, situation. But um, it's Leopold have definitely delivered over so many years great optics, and they just keep getting better. And it's an encouraging thing when you see an optic company uh, where they just keep bringing out new stuff and just keep evolving with times. Um, although they get a little bit left behind with the ranging, but uh, their range finders are amazing. Um, so yeah, if they can just incorporate it, um, I would definitely have a harder look at the Leopold range. Um, but the feel of them, um, the glass, everything. When I go, when I went over to the shows, they were just outstanding. Really, really nice set of binoculars. They come in so many different colors, and um, yeah, that's just a cool all-round optic and then last on my list <clears throat> the reason why i put them last is i think they've missed a point somewhere um they sort of abusing the i don't want to say power power is not the right word but they're sort of abusing their their technology into manipulating the purchase of more great business model but as far as a hunter um, it's sort of a slap in the face type of thing, but SIG and SAR. So SIG have bought out, I mentioned them a little bit earlier, a great set of binoculars with rangefinder in, but they're pretty much on the same quality level and the same, I would, I would almost put them identical to the, the Vortex Furies. The problem is they don't have a lifetime warranty and number two, you almost feel when you buy these set of binoculars that you actually have to buy the scope with it. That's the idea behind it, and that's their business model. It makes perfect sense, but as a professional hunter, I sort of feel kind of left out if I'm just looking for a set of binoculars at this point. Um, I'm sure at a later stage you can buy, but with technology evolving, you know, by the time you're ready to buy the scope, there's going to be some, a better, even better and more developed system out there. And then you're going to sort of feel, well, I'm never really going to get on top of this whole thing. So <clears throat> for me, although they're a great set of binoculars, uh, obviously the lifetime warranty puts them way down the list. And number two, the, the aspect that they're not wanting to look out for the hunt, the, the budget range, mm, Budget range is also not a very nice word to say, but uh, the entry-level professional hunter, the guys that can afford decent stuff, um, Sig and Sauer, they, 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 their product is there, but it's almost like you've got to buy the bundle. You can't just have the binoculars. That's just my feeling of it, and I feel like it's a little bit of a slap in the face, but... Um, Again, it's just my personal opinion. I could be horribly wrong about it, but great set of binoculars. Uh, the ranging is incredible, and um, yeah, their the technology is also evolving, but at a price. So yeah, and uh, I went onto one of the sites now a little bit earlier before I went, and um, I was quite shocked with with some of the listings that they've come. So so this particular site is called GearHungry.com. 
and um, they list Bushnell. Now for me, Bushnell's never really, ca Bushnell was my first set of binoculars. Um, they're great, uh, they're extremely affordable. Um, I actually buy a couple of them for my for my trackers when uh, probably once every five or so seasons, and they make a really nice set of binoculars. It's 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 a really nice entry level. But as a professional hunter, when you want to have that advantage out in the field, you want to be you want to better yourself. You want to give yourself the best opportunity to do so. And with a good set of eyes, there's nothing better than giving you that extra edge um, when you're out there. So for me, that was, you know, Bushnell, they are, they're just, they're just a nice uh, optic. Um, I see coming in at number three, they had the Vortex, uh, Vipers, um, HDs. Uh, I try to have a look when this was all processed. It must be quite old, but um, they list quite a few Vortexes and mainly just Bushnells. Um, and yeah for me it was a little bit obscure to see Bushnells up in the top five and uh and I was I was trying to understand the logic behind it but you know some of their write-ups are, are just that they don't they don't really um you know they don't really punt why Bushnell is any better than Vortex or anything like that so it's, it's a pretty weird setup here but um, I was just looking around at what, what other people would say about certain binoculars. I've even got Nikons over here. Now, Nikons, to me, are yeah, they, they not the best for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, some of their pros and cons, I mean, their cons they had were on the Bushnells were um, grips and usability. I mean, as a professional hunter, that's pretty much everything you want is uh, usability and grip, I mean, and durability. So is it durable out in the bush? Can it handle a punch? And so, yeah, <clears throat> it's optics, guys, as an up-and-coming pH, again, optics are probably going to be one of your most important investments. Don't be scared to make the investment. You're probably wondering why should we fork out all this money um, for something that can maybe do the job just as good in the Bushnell, trust me, it's an investment. You're going to see the results later on. Um, yeah, and uh, don't skimper on it. Don't, if, if, you, if you're willing to, to push through and save a bit of money, really go all out in your optics. You know, there's, I don't cut corners when it comes to this. To me, I found that out the hard way, um, but I've never looked back now. I've got a nice set of binoculars. I would like to save up and get the rangefinder ones. Um, I just think it would just give a whole different meaning to the way I hunt. And I mean, my Leicas definitely serve that purpose. And although I didn't have them in my top five today, um, just because I think the new generation Leicas with the shape they've got, <clears throat> I've heard some ugly reports about uh, the ranging not being as accurate as what the old ones were. Battery power not lasting as long as what they used to. Um, and yeah, a lot of you guys might also question why I haven't put Swarovski in there. For me, Swarovski as a South African professional hunter are just completely out of our price range. Um, look, if you're doing well out there and you can afford them, well then you're in a different class. But at this point in time, with the Rand dollar exchange and the way things are going, it's just, it's made it way too pricey. So guys, um, yeah, that pretty much wraps up my, my um, optics review. And uh, I would like to get more in depth with a bit of a product, you know, have a product up here and get more in depth with it. Um, but I thought a nice little introduction into what is your probably your most essential item in your in your bag. Um, this was pretty nice, light, just a little bit of feedback and just a little bit of personal experience that I've experienced out there. Um, so yeah, again, hope you guys enjoyed and uh, yeah, I look forward to doing next week's episode with you guys. <coughs> guys, again, 
from myself, Dylan Love, and PH Journals. If you would like to get involved in the show in any way possible, whether it be financially, products, or whatever the case may be, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, I'm not one to ask for these sort of things, but it, it's been tough times out there, and I really would like to grow the show to a respectable level where I can bring quality products on and I can't do that without any backing so I've had some incredible support from all my sponsors um, from the public out there from everyone it's been incredible I, I can't thank you guys enough and you know if I, I really want to keep this going and with your guys help I'll be able to do so so um, yeah it's it's been tough times out there again my thoughts and condolences go out to all the farmers that have lost loved ones we stand behind you um, i'll be watching the 16th of october very closely um, it's a big day as far as south african democracy is concerned and as far as um, the farmer's future in south africa is based upon so uh, until then stay safe stay humble and if you are hunting happy hunting and we'll catch up with you guys soon cheers